When you hear the phrase multinational corporation, you'll probably think of glass buildings, cutthroat corporate wars, and overambitious people in expensive suits. But it's a fact that today's businessmen look nothing alike their medieval predecessors that wore white robes and red crosses. Stating that the Templars were the first bankers in history will be pretentious and incorrect, as the idea of borrowing someone money and then ripping them off with interest dates to the second millennium before Christ. However, what sets the Templars apart from the others is the fact that they were the first private, international company to provide financial services. Even though they are, according to one's beliefs, represented as pious warriors or heathens, the Templars showed great skill with money. Which is a paradox, as they were officially paupers, the poor. The story of Templar finances begins shortly after the Crusaders took Jerusalem, which became a popular destination for Christian tourists. And as the Holy Land is known for being a peaceful place, one man got an idea to form a company that will act as security for tourists. Without wasting time, he made his way through Europe, asking nobles to invest in his company. And you might be wondering, how did it go? Better than 90% of today's startup projects. Giant amounts of money started siphoning into the Middle East. But that still wasn't enough, as a holy war costs a lot. Luckily, the Pope got into the game, whose certificate exempted the Templars from taxes and gave them the right to levy them on others. To make it even better, new members had to surrender their possessions when joining the order. So the Templars quickly acquired large properties throughout Europe. To begin with, the Templars noticed that the average tourist had a high chance of losing his head and money on the way to the Holy Land. That's why they established branches throughout Europe and introduced a letter of credit. If someone from France had the idea of visiting Christ's grave, he could go to a nearby branch, deposit cash to the Templars and get a piece of paper encrypted with Maltese crosses. When he arrived to the Holy Land, he would exchange the paper for the same value pick up the money and start spending it. Even though this transaction wasn't as fast as Western Union, it was revolutionary for the 12th century. Templar branches were now full of gold and well protected, which gave the idea for a new Templar service, safekeeping of valuables with a symbolic fee. European lords used this service and stashed treasures within the Templar walls. Convinced that no one would think of robbing Templar branches that were directly under God's protection. The Templars now ventured into dangerous financial waters and started giving out loans with interest, which was forbidden by Christianity. To avoid this obstacle, they included donations into their contracts. The Templars took donations from everyone, even from the poor, and that's why they had around 200 branches throughout Europe, their own trade fleet, forts, estates, vineyards, and farmland, which you could use for a fee at the start of the 14th century. They financed wars between Christian rulers without any moral dilemmas, while making up for losses in the Vatican's treasury. In the East, they were mainly focused on logistics and trade, while using Turkish mercenaries for warfare. In less than 200 years, they became a corporation without borders. They accounted to nobody except the Pope. And just when they showed their intention to create a state, like their fellow Teutonic and Hospitaller orders, they were swiftly terminated. How did that happen? The Templars simply lost their purpose as the Muslims kicked them out of the Holy Land, along with other crusaders. And at the same time in Europe, they held huge estates, wealth, and kept the Christian rulers in debt slavery. Many owed money to the Templars, especially the French king Philip, who took out a bunch of loans for his maniac war campaigns. And we all know that the best way to repay a loan is to get rid of the person you borrowed money from. In Philip's case, it meant barging into Templar branches, arresting Templar officials, torturing and forcing them to admit that they were gay, which was a big no-no in medieval Europe, heretics and worshippers of Baphomet. The Grand Master and the French Templar branch admitted to all of this and ended up on the pyre. While the Templars in other countries were converted into the Hospitaller order, their vast possessions were seized. The English king even forbid them from entering the temple church, which he usurped. But what was their boss doing while all of this was happening? For centuries, it was theorized on why the Pope gave up the Templars, until this lady uncovered the true reason that was hidden in Vatican's secret archives. Pope Clement, 
acquainted the Templars of all charges and tried to save them, but Philip openly threatened him with war. And this is how the real story of the Templars ends. But if you are interested in the esoteric one, you shall consult Dan Brown and Nicolas Cage. Hey, thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, you might as well leave a like and a comment. And before you leave, I recommend that you watch this video next.